Hello everybody, my name is Ed Maselli. I'm a member of the, the OxyKit and Pillar Tribe and we are building an oxygen concentrator. Today I'm going to show you how it works, what the parts do, and try to explain uh, some of the theory. So let me show you what's going on here. This is our, our concentrator. This is the one that works really well. Um, so we, so, we, so we have a compressor. This compressor is about a two horsepower compressor. This is how much we actually needed to get 15 liters per minute output. It, it, is, a, it is quite a bit of you know, hefty compressor. The air, comes, the, the, the pressurized air, we're running around 30 PSI at the moment uh, with, with this compressor so that the air comes out of the compressor and it goes into the cooling coils. This is a very simple, effective way of cooling the air um, I believe it's about 25 foot of uh, copper coil, so so uh, you can actually feel the difference of the hot uh, the hot air on the top and as it cools at the bottom. So the air comes the, com comes directly from the compressor into the cooling coils. After the cooling coils, it actually goes into the the input pressure regulator. This is set at around 30 psi maximum. So after the, um, after the input pressure regulator, it is split and it goes into these two valves. Those two valves are three-port, two-way valves. So the, the input comes from one side and this is the, the purge exhaust. So, so this, this valve is going to switch from either getting pressurized air or from emptying the sieve through, through this opening. Um, we have two sieves, each one filled with about about three pounds of zeolite. Um, we're using a three-inch pipe, and I have other videos showing the details of the inside of, of, of each sieve canister, the de the details of the of the uh, the screens that are holding the zeolite in, the springs that are keeping it compressed, and so forth. So. So air comes in from the bottom, it goes through the zeolite, the zeolite absorbs the nitrogen uh, and, then, and then concentrated oxygen goes out from the top. When it goes out from the top, as you can see, it, it goes into this, this, uh, this T, T, you know, uh, T's and it splits off. It splits off into a, as you can see here, so, so we have this Y configuration with, with orifices inside. Each of these orifices has a 1.6 mm, millimeter diameter hole in it. Um, I made those using aluminum rod um, drilled in the center with a 1.6 millimeter drill bit. And then I cleaned them up a little bit. Uh, what, what this effectively does is it splits off. The concentrated oxygen comes, comes out of the active sieve and it's split. Half of it goes into the surge tank. This is our surge tank. And half of it goes into the, the uh, sieve that's being purged at the moment. And so what this does is the, the oxygen pushes out the remaining nitrogen in that sieve because now it's under low pressure. And it, and it pushes out the nitrogen and it fills this, the, the uh, empty sieve with oxygen. During the next cycle, whenever this sieve starts to pressurize, it now has, has some concentrated oxygen in there, and it, it actually gets in, enriched even more. So that increases our concentration, and then it feeds, again, as it comes out, it's split, half of it goes into the surge tank to be consumed, the other half goes into the, the empty sieve to fill it, to push out the nitrogen, and to, uh, um, to enrich enrich it even 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 higher than it, than it was when it came out of the first the first sieve. <clears throat> this is our uh, equalization valve. What this does is, after the sieve is uh, is purged, this opens up a little bit to allow the full sieve uh, canister to start to pressurize the empty canister. This way, we're utilizing that pressurized uh, oxygen to fill the canister to, to ramp up the pressure quicker. This helps, um, this helps with, with the nit nitrogen absorption because the higher the pressure, the more nitrogen is absorbed. 
The output goes into a surge tank. The surge tank is basically an empty canister that is supposed to temporarily hold the, the oxygen before it's consumed. It, the, the output of the surge tank goes into the second pressure regulator. This is a low pressure regulator set uh, at around 7 or 8 psi. The output from this pressure regulator then goes into our output flow meter. This output flow meter is set to 15 LPM and then the output from the flow meter uh, comes out. It's split here. One side goes into our mask. The other side is, uh, is going into our, our sensor, our, our, our oxygen meter. This is, this is what, what's going to tell us if it's actually making oxygen or not. This, this flow meter is set to about 300 milliliters per, per minute because the flow meter doesn't require very much flow in, in, in order to measure it. And it's actually, as you can see the label, it's 300 milliliters maximum. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Um, the electronics, let me, let, me, let me talk about the electronics. We're using an Arduino board to control the timing. So the Arduino board is very simple, very easy to use, very cheap, and it's, and it's very easy, easy to get. The Arduino board controls a relay board. We have, this is an eight, eight relay board. We're only using uh, uh, three of them actually. So, or, or four of them, and, uh, I believe. One of them is, is, is used for uh, turn out, turn in, turning on the compressor, but, it, but, but, but it's not used right now. So, uh, yeah, so basically we're only using three of them because we have three valves. Equalization valve, and, and two input valves. So um, we are going to make the code available. We're using about a five second cycle for, for, each, for each active sieve and um, a 300, milli, 300 millisecond um, equalization cycle along with the 300 millisecond uh, per, um, I guess, fill cycle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and turn on the, com the compressor and this will get it going. We're also using a cooling fan next to the compressor. This fan keeps it cool because it, it, after several hours of running it takes it up a little bit. Okay, it's breathing. The pressures are ramping up. You can see from the pressure gauges how it says pressurizes and then it empties. And then the next one pressurizes and it empties. Our storage tank is holding here, you know, about 10 psi, I believe. How the valve is switching and then the inversion. So the output of the of the flow meter, the flow meter is currently putting out 15 LPM. This is again, this is hot, and this is pretty cool. I've done this, it's, it's uh, comfortable to touch. 